When we spoke to President Volodymyr Zelensky Saturday, we began with Vladimir Putin's referendum in Russian-occupied regions of Ukraine. Actions intended to help him justify annexing territory, which is equivalent to the size of the state of Maine. It is illegal under international law. The U.S. says they're a sham and intended to take about 15 percent of your territory away. What happens to Ukrainians living in these areas if they respond no when they are asked if they want to be part of Russia? The referendum can lead to very tragic moments. Um, you started your question uh, with an answer that is correct. Those people who don't come to referendum, you know, Russians can turn off their electricity and won't give them an opportunity to live a normal human life. They force people, they throw them in prisons, they force them to come to these pseudo referenda and also they also announced mobilization. They're forcing people to fight, people from the temporarily occupied territories. I see other threats when they complete, if they succeed with this referenda. Um, the ballots have be, had been already prepared. The Russia uh, the Russian government can officially announce that the referendum have been completed and the results will be announced. This would make it impossible in any case to continue any diplomatic negotiations with the president of Russian Federation. And he knows it very well. I have spoken about it publicly. I think it's a very dangerous signal from President Putin that tells us that Putin is not going to finish this war. That is what's going on. The Biden administration has built its entire policy around avoiding direct conflict with Russia. Once this annexation happens, does it change that dynamic? Is Russia using this as an excuse to say that it is being attacked because the West is providing Ukraine with weapons? If it is seizing Eastern Ukraine to annex it? Yes, that's exactly so. That is correct. Look, he knows, he feels it, and his military leadership reports to him. He knows that he's losing the war. In the battlefield, Ukraine has seized the initiative. He cannot explain to his society why, and he's looking for answers to these questions. It's seven months since Russia occupied, tried to occupy Ukraine, but they couldn't. And now he has to justify. He has to take steps to justify. He says, see, let's look at it. I am not afraid of Ukraine. It was a special operation, but now it's Russia. It's our territory. Look, we conducted referenda. Now it's the West who attacks Russia. Now the West attacks our territories. We have let the society join Russia, the society that wanted to be with Russia. He has announced the mobilization. It used to be hidden. Now you see that it has been announced publicly. For several months, they've been secretly mobilizing, uh, but now they admitted that the army is not able to fight with Ukraine anymore. Vladimir Putin continues to dangle the threat of nuclear weapons use. You've called this nuclear blackmail. Do you think he's bluffing right now? Look, maybe yesterday it was bluff. Now it could be a reality. Let's look. What is a contemporary use of nuclear weapons? or nuclear blackmail. He targeted um, and occupied our nuclear power plant in the city of Energodar. He continues his blackmail uh, related to us exporting electricity to Europe. Several 
days ago they started shooting at another nuclear power plant. The nuclear plant lost all the windows and doors, etc. So he wants to scare the whole world. These are the first steps of his nuclear blackmail. I th don't think he's bluffing. I think the world is deterring it and containing this threat. We need to keep putting pressure on him and not allow him to continue. President Biden has said more sanctions are coming. I think that there are sanctions that must be implement implemented towards the very end, completely. If we cut Russian banks from SWIFT, we need to cut all Russian banks from SWIFT. If we talk about em embargo uh, for um, um, uh, for energy, we need not to look for compromises or um, we need to make sure that this embargo will be working and all the prices uh, would be implemented according to the embargo because the profits uh, from uh, from um, these imports support the Russian army and fund the war. The United States could show its leadership position and recognize Russia as a sponsor of terrorism. I understand there will be implications. These implications will make diplomatic negotiations impossible. However, they are terrorists and we cannot let them do it out of fear. They will not surrender. We need to keep applying pressure. They are terrorists. They don't have honor. They cannot keep their word. They do not kill military personnel. They rape, torture, and kill civilians. We found a big mass grave of half a thousand people. Today, I received more information. The journalists are on their way. They found two more mass graves, big graves with hundreds of people also. And we're talking about a little town of Izum. Do you know there are two more mass graves in a small town? This is what's going on. The sanctions need to continue. The sanctions will have political impact as well as financial impact. The U.S. has released intelligence about Russia's filtration centers that it is putting Ukrainians into and estimate that hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian children are being taken to Russia. Does forcibly separating kids from their families constitute genocide? We have all the information about filtration camps, isolation camps. People are being tortured with various means. They apply pressure. They torture with electric current and so on. And apart from that, there's deportation. I can't say exact numbers. I don't want to lie. I want you to know all the truth. I can say or confirm that hundreds of thousands of children have been deported because families have been separated. But it's absolute true that there are thousands of these children. We have confirmed that. Offensive operations are more expensive than defensive operations. The White House is asking Congress for $12 billion more to provide to Ukraine. What do you need this money for? What is essential right now? Thousands of people have been killed, raped, tortured. That's why we need this help to deoccupy our territories to make sure that more people survive. I don't think that this is the highest price in the world to save thousands of lives. We're very thankful for HIMARS and other MLRSs that give us an ability to conduct our offensive. Our army uh, sees the initiative cuts the technical capabilities uh, of Russia. Second, artillery. Artillery helps us to save the lives of our 
warriors, our fighters. They need uh, an opportunity to get supplies of tanks from the United States as well as Europe. If the U.S. will be able to show its leadership um, and will be able to get the tanks, um, then the Germany, then Germany and other European countries will follow. I think if we get tanks from the U.S., the European allies will also help us to deoccupy Ukrainian cities with tanks, air defense systems. We absolutely need the United States to show leadership and give Ukraine the air defense systems. I want to thank President Biden for a positive decision that has been already made. And to the U.S. Congress, we received NASAMS. Um, it's the air defense systems, but believe me, it, it's not even nearly enough to cover the civilian infrastructure, schools, hospitals, universities, homes of Ukrainians. Can there be stability in Europe if Vladimir Putin remains in power? No. No? I don't have anything to add. My opinion is no. We have observed this over the years. We don't see stability. Mr. President, thank you for your time today. I do want to ask before I let you go, you have kept Ukraine united during this war. Have you seen evidence that Vladimir Putin will now come and target you in this moment of desperation? You are very right in saying that we are united. We have become even more united now than ever. I am one of the targets. Of course, it goes without saying. It's not because of my personality, just because I'm because the president is a leader of their country. Mr. President, thank you for your time and good luck to you, sir. Thank you very much. We will need it. We wish you peace and everything. Thank you very much for your support, the United States.